Hey everybody in the studio with Dirks Bentley. Welcome back. How Thanks, you doing, man. buddy? I'm doing great. Great to be in Austin. I gotta tell you the type of guy Dirks is. When Dirks had the number one record in the country, what was I thinking? What did he do? He was the opening act for Jason Bowling and the Stragglers because you kept your commitment. I mean, you could have easily blown that, that, that gig off. Well, man, uh, that, that was, you know, I'm always intimidated playing Austin. It's, there's so much, so much great music down here, and uh, I certainly wasn't going to go on after, after Bowling. I'm a big fan of his music, and um, it's only my first time doing like a headline show in Austin, so I was just happy to be here playing and, uh, and hanging out and get a chance to watch him after the show. Still a huge fan of him and his music, and uh, as well as a lot of great... Uh, you know, Texas and Austin based bands. But the, but you had the number one record in the country though, you know? <laughs> yeah, but still a lot of I still gotta feel about an hour and a half of time, so <laughs> right, let's let's talk about what was I thinking. That was actually based on a true story. Yeah, it was, man. I wrote that back in uh two thousand and probably one or just, you know, I wrote that with a couple other guys, a buddy of mine from, from Tyler, Texas and another friend of mine up in Nashville, the three of us got together and kinda of we're going back over some different situations we've been in and uh Dating girls at different times and uh, guns and stuff they're used to deter trouble deter certain boyfriends to push them away and um, now that I have a daughter of my own two daughters uh, the, the shotguns will remain close in close proximity <laughs> to the front door I think I have a little chair where the, the boyfriend will come sit down there will be a nice display on in the background but uh, I have a long ways to go before that happens now okay but the song is actually about a real person Did that person ever call you back and said hey wait Dirks where you there's a girl I was thinking of in, in mind and she knows that if she was the, you know, the, might have been the, the initial source okay. of. Uh, See there. You know, there's, there's still some pending legal situations going on, so I can't <laughs> well, talk about it too okay. much. You have to go listen to the song. Let, let's let's talk about your brand new album because you did something a little bit different. You, yeah. You, you record this up was it North Carolina. Yeah, I went to a Asheville, North Carolina. It's about five hours from Nashville, so I loaded up the bus with, with the guys and uh, some great musicians, and and we drove out to Asheville, North Carolina. And went out there for five days and uh, just. Just to get outside of Nashville, you know. I, I love Nashville to death. It's, you know, there's a lot of great music in Nashville locally. But um, for me, recording in Nashville is difficult because my family lives there mm -hmm. and all the guys and, you know, that I make this record with, all their families live there. And so just being in Nashville at 5 o'clock rolls around, you're starting to think about you know, that instead of thinking about the music. So we just got outside of town and uh, spent five days in, in Nashville and just uh, you know, dove in this music and uh, just got as much out of it as we possibly could and came out with, uh, with 15 songs and that I'm just loving. But you did this a little bit different because you also streamed this over the, over yeah, the internet. Yeah. yeah, we wanted the fans to have a chance to be part of it the same way we are with the, the flip camera. Right. Um, so we had a Ustream uh, camera set up in the corner of the studio. And I moved around different spots every day just to get make it fun for the fans. And they'd, they're right there. They're, every now and then I'd turn the audio on so they could hear some of the stuff we were putting down. But uh, for the most part, they were just watching us jam out and, and bob our heads a lot. And they were writing stuff to us that we'd get back on, right back to them. So it was kind of it was kind of cool to be in the studio but still feel that outside presence of your fans being part of it, which is great because when you're making a, when you're on the show, when you're playing a show, everything revolves around that, that feeling of that feedback from the fans. So to have that in the studio was a, was a nice connection. But see, you're, you're saying presence to me that that translates into pressure, from the <laughs> pressure on you where you want to be as comfortable as you can. In the well, studio. you walk in, you forget the cameras on you. You walk into the studio and you're, you know. That's the danger part All right this there. Liquor starts piling up on the the, the desk <laughs> in the studio, and someone's you know, pulling a swig off a bottle of Jack Daniels. All of a sudden, you're like, "Oh, the camera's on!" You know, there's kids out there watching. But uh, <laughs> that's the way records get made. You know, I mean, there's a little, there's a lot of fun that goes into the records, and um, when you make them that way, and you're able to get outside of town and do it the right way, and uh, so you know, it was, it's, you forget the cameras on every now and then. But uh, it's pretty funny. Now, when will this be out finally? Sometime the summer. The record's right? gonna come out in the summer. Um, the single's gonna come out here in, in weeks. Um, this single's called. Am I the only one? Am I the only one that wants to have fun tonight? It's mm. just a real fun, uh, it's just a party song, I guess. Um, we're getting ready to start a tour sponsored by Jägermeister. Boy, that's Speaking a little of, party uh, right there. <laughs> and uh, so it's a fun song to kind of kick off this record. And just to kick off another chapter of my life, you know, I just finished that Up on the Ridge album, which uh, is one of my favorite records of all time that I've ever made. But uh, I wanted to get back into, you know, I was kind of missing the electric guitar and the kick drum and some louder country sounds. And uh, so that's what this record's kind of all about. And it's a, it's a fun album. How has your life changed? Because the first time we met, you were single. Now you're married. You've got two young daughters. Yeah. Has that influenced your writing, your career, any? Uh, definitely. You know, it influences you as a as a, as a, you know, as a man. It changes your whole perspective on on life. It's, luckily for me, you know, I get to live in two. I, I get to live two dreams. You know, I have the, the dream of having the family at home and the kids, but also just the continuous dream of being out here on the road with my band and, and get up on stage every night and just cranking up the amps and. and Playing country music, it's like it's the best feeling in the world to have both of those uh, those worlds exist. Um, but certainly as a writer, yeah, there's 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 some material on this new record that's not. Um, 
I, when, I try, when I write love songs like that, I try to make them broad enough where, as a listener, they can hear them. One person might hear it one way. Some mm-hmm. might, someone might hear that as, oh, it's a song for his daughter, or someone else might hear that, oh, it's just a love song, you know, in general. I, I don't try to write too specific when it comes to that type of uh, thing about kids and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I think it definitely influences your writer. It has to. If you're a songwriter and you're, you know, once you have a child, your whole perspective really does change. It opens up your whole mind, a whole the universe didn't know existed. So, um, now, your oldest daughter's how old? She's two and a half. Does she recognize your voice on the radio? Right away. So she knows that's one of daddy's songs. You'd be, you'd be, it's, it's a, for just a regular dude to, you know, have, to have, which I consider myself to be, to have a kid, a two-year-old, and to see how much they understand and know. I mean, she hears my voice, uh, she knows it right away, mm-hmm. you know. Of course, she hears a banjo, she thinks it's me too, the banjo, da da. No, it's, I do more than just play bluegrass. <laughs> but, uh, she, um, yeah, she recognizes my voice, she's, it's pretty constant. She loves hearing, like, we were in the car driving, there's songs she wants to hear of mine. Uh-huh. The new stuff. And she's listening, she hears the new music before anybody else. And you brought her out when you were on tour with Brad Paisley. Because I remember seeing her backstage with yeah. these little bitty custom uh, earplugs. Yeah, she comes out to a couple of shows here and there. And she she loves it. You know, I'm not trying to force it on her. I'm not trying to, to make her the next Miley Cyrus. But uh, I do love. I do play music all the time. My wife loves music. There's music always playing in the house. There's, there's guitars lying around everywhere. So, that's the um, way to raise a kid. But, but it's just better being around a... Miley Cyrus? No, no, no. But when you're raising your kid around music's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, no. I think it's good to have your own instruments, man. Whether you know, just I, there's, I don't want to, you know, I'm I'm guilty of playing a lot of video games on the bus. My gosh, I, I will spend the next couple hours today actually working on music, but also playing some some hockey, some golf, some uh, some, some John Madden football. But um, when you're that, you know, as a kid, I think it's really good to you know to be playing an instrument, whether you're doing it, trying to do it professionally later on, or just to learn notes and scales and music. It's just a good way to for your brain, you know. To, develop, I think. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how, how her future career develops. Who knows? And we can't wait to hear the new album. In the yeah. studio, Dirk's Bentley.